Welcome to the Free From Binge Eating Podcast with me, Breed, your host. Binge eating sucks. Trust me, I know. I was stuck in that spiral of binge, restrict, diet, yo-yoing weight loss, feeling guilty and ashamed, and hating my body for 10 years. Now that I'm out, I'm turning my pain into purpose by helping you stop binging, start loving your body, self, and life again. It's time to live free from binge eating. Are you ready? Let's go. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode. I can't wait to get stuck into this one because I think it's gonna um, help a lot of you who are at this certain part of your journey. So heads up, we're gonna be talking about weight loss in this episode, as I'm sure you can tell from the title. So if you're not at that part of your journey where you wanna be hearing about that, um, definitely you know listen to this another time when you are ready or just don't listen to it. This episode is more ideal for those who have worked on their food relationship and they might want to lose a bit of weight and they just want some help with that. So more specifically, what we're going to go into is tips on how you can lose weight, lose fat, while still maintaining a healthy food relationship and actually seeing results that last. And this episode has kind of been inspired by one of my recent one-to-one clients who's at this part of her journey. So she did the 30-day reboot, she saw amazing results, she hasn't binged in months. But then she was like, okay, I actually gained a ton of weight from binging and I'd like to lose at least some of it. So I'm helping her on that journey. She She's done SFL as well and just wanted that one-to-one support and accountability throughout the journey. So I'm going to be sharing some of the, basically the things that she's been doing that we've been focusing on in her journey that have really been helping her see results. So let's backtrack a second, rewind. I'm sure, you know, you've lost weight before, right? Many of us have lost weight, whether it's a few pounds or a lot of weight. Anyone can lose weight, right? You can lose weight by eating less for a week. You're going to lose some weight, but too often in that process, we do two things. We lose our healthy relationship with ourselves. We kind of lose ourselves in the process and we regain the weight as well. So, you know, I'm sure you know, half the battle is losing the weight. The other half is making sure it's done in a way that is long lasting and just doesn't mess up your food relationship. I know so many of us, if, if you've done the 30 day reboot or you're thinking about it, you're on it, you know, I think that's a journey so many of us take. We start out with this you know, innocent desire to just lose a bit of weight. Sorry, there's a dog barking in the background outside on the street, so I'm sorry if you can hear that. But essentially, you know, we kind of fall into this whole journey because we wanted to lose a bit of weight and then we didn't quite do it in the right way. Probably went a little bit too extreme. We got caught up in it all. We wanted the fast results. We wanted to feel better about ourselves faster. So we ended up kind of messing up our food relationship. Probably didn't end up keeping the weight off. And now you might be doing something like the 30 day reboot to get back to a stable, healthy, happy place with food and your body. And also just for a second, what exactly do I mean when I say, you know, messing up your food relationship along the weight loss journey? What does that really mean? Well, As I said, when we try to lose weight, oftentimes we just really want that quick fix. We just want to get it over and done with. We want to to feel better. We want to feel more confident. And we often hyperfixate on that end goal of just feeling amazing in our new body. Can't wait to just get there already so I can finally live my life and start dating and be the person I really am. All those things that we probably thought I've definitely been there too. And we just place so much of our worth in our weight. So along a weight loss journey, if it's kind of gone, not that great, you might start noticing some of the following things happening when trying to lose weight. Things like, you know, allowing the weight on the scale to affect your mood. I've definitely been there. Avoiding events, restaurants, parties, just going out so you don't have to worry about the food, so you don't have to try to guess the calories in the drinks or the food that people have cooked for you. Uh, Maybe you are waiting to start dating until you lose the weight. Maybe you're cutting out entire food groups or just types of foods that you really love, but you're just trying to get rid of them all now while you lose the weight quickly or even just cutting calories more and more to get to your goal faster. Another one is setting unrealistic weight loss deadlines. I've definitely been there. I was the queen of unrealistic weight loss deadlines. 
the amount of times where I would just be like, okay, I binged. Now I need to sort out my plan to lose 10 kilos by this person's wedding or whatever it was. Or by the time I meet up with these old friends because my ex-boyfriend is going to be there and I don't want him to see me like this. (laughs) Just all these like crazy deadlines I'd set for myself. And, you know, maybe you've been there too where you start falling behind the schedule because maybe you... I don't know, didn't have a big enough deficit one day, you went over your calorie limit. And then instead of me just like being like, okay, well, let's just push this, this goal or even not have a goal, let's push it back. I would just be like, no, okay, now what are we going to do to make up for lost time? (laughs) It's just crazy. Other things that might happen when you're trying to lose weight and, and things are kind of going in a unhealthy manner would be a common one is becoming scared to eat any food that you haven't cooked or you don't know the calories in or you just start to see them as bad foods and they're going to ruin your progress. So you just start to become scared and anxious to eat certain foods, become maybe obsessive around foods. You're thinking about it. You're fantasizing about it. I know there was definitely a time where I, I went to this health retreat where it was like the goal was weight loss and it was so extreme. It was so unsustainable, the route that we were taking and I already was in an unhealthy mindset around food, that I would literally spend my nights in my like room, the the room that they assigned me, like a hotel room. Literally, and I remember this on Instagram, my explore page was basically just food porn. It was like brownies, oozing cookies, like all these recipes. I was just like drooling over like mouthwatering, just looking at them, saving them, telling myself I'd make them another time or being like, I can't wait to get out of here and eat this stuff. So that's an example of becoming obsessive around food that I definitely had. Another one is becoming proud that you're pushing through your hunger because you're like, oh, it's going to mean more weight loss, uh, faster weight loss. If I can just push through and just go to sleep hungry like this is a good thing stuff like that and and obviously you know if weight loss is becoming too extreme very likely you're going to start binge eating like I did and so you might end up binging in secret and then just feeling like you need to compensate by hardly eating the days after so if any of that sounds familiar you probably are in or have been in this kind of weight loss journey where it's just it's not going well it's not gonna end well most likely it's unsustainable doesn't feel good it's miserable and you're not living life so I mean I know when I spent years trying to lose weight all of these things happened to me and so much more and I fully slipped into disordered eating for that lasted 10 years I'm sure you you were even thinking like a lot of that list is like classic signs of disordered eating or eating disorder and this is not to scare you into avoiding weight loss forever of course if you want to avoid weight loss you don't want to lose weight that's totally fine no one ever has to lose weight It's just to say that losing weight does not have to end up in this way. It does not always equal disordered eating and rebounding weight and just like being stuck in this cycle. And I think some of the reasons that it does end up this way for quite a lot of people are things like, you know, we place all of our worth on our weight. So much of it, especially as women. If you believe that all of your problems will be solved by losing weight, then it's very likely that you want to get there quickly, right? Like, of course, life is short. Let's just get to that place where we're finally confident and we feel hot and we feel amazing. And you can finally wear all these outfits you want to wear. So if you're in this place where, therefore, right now, you don't feel worthy and you feel gross about yourself and you don't want to live life, you're also likely to treat yourself with disrespect along the way. Even just things like, you know, those glances in the mirror, the like, ew, I look gross, like, oh, I need to cut calories even more today. Or I'm just going to skip, you know, the work drinks where really I want to flirt with that colleague, but I'm not going to go because I just look gross and I need to change now. You know, disrespecting who you are now and along the way, it's kind of that whole mindset of, you know, you can't hate yourself into a version you love. You just can't. It's just, it's going to be, and even if you, even if you can, it's going to feel horrible along the way it's gonna be miserable and it literally doesn't have to be that way it doesn't have to be the case where you disrespect yourself now and you only respect yourself when you're in that after version of yourself and you lose weight it just doesn't have to be that way i think another reason why weight loss ends out badly for a lot of people where you're regaining the weight and you're just having poor food relationship 
issues is lack of awareness and knowledge. So sometimes we go into our weight loss journey, maybe the start with just like good intentions, you know, I just want to lose a bit of weight, whatever it is, but we haven't really been taught how to lose weight in a sustainable way. I know so many of us embark on our first weight loss journeys, even in our teen years or our early 20s, maybe you've moved to college and you gained a bunch of weight because now your diet is different, your parents aren't cooking for you anymore and you're making different food choices and you gain some weight. And then you're like, okay, I need to lose weight. Of course, your worth is tied up in your weight. So you're like, we need to do this fast because I need to look similar to all the other people in my class. And we just do the way that we think is gonna work. And we just, we're just like, okay, we're gonna reduce calories. We're gonna eat a bit less. And you know, typically at that age, we see fast weight loss and the novelty of it all as well. It just makes it easier to adhere to lowering calories for a while. And then you're like, oh, okay, let me decide to cut them a little bit further to keep results coming. Not knowing, not having that knowledge and awareness that pushing your deficit too low almost always backfires and causes issues with food fixation, weight obsession, binge eating, all that stuff starts to unravel. And oftentimes when, when in the fat loss journey, we, we just lack the awareness of when things aren't going well. We're so in it, we're so focused on like getting to our goal that we just sort of start to not notice or not not prioritize when these things start happening, like small changes in your food relationship, like starting to avoid restaurants, saying no here and there, to going out with your friends, coming up with excuses, oh, I just need to focus on my studies, or I've got a busy work assignment, or I'm just feeling a bit off, telling yourself that you're an introvert, that's why you're not going out, you're too shy, whatever it is. like. These things over time build up and we might not notice in the moment because we're so focused on that goal of weight loss. And so having that awareness, that knowledge of the signs to look out for, what might start happening, like that list that I went through earlier, basically like all the things that might start happening in a weight loss journey that ends up becoming something quite serious over time, turns into disordered eating or eating disorders. If you have that awareness, you'd be able to press pause on your journey and be like, wait, (laughs) hold up. I'm starting to notice that I'm making up excuses to go out. Or I'm starting to notice that I'm like freaking out about calories and different foods that before I felt so chill about. Like I never even thought about that before. And I don't like that feeling. You can press pause and just be like, okay, weight loss can hold on a second, we're gonna sort it this out, we're gonna get back to a place where we feel relaxed with food, where we're not stressing, we're not obsessing, and then we can press play again when we're ready because there is no rush with this. That is a mindset that I instill over and over in SFL, my online course that helps you with sustainable fat loss. Um, it's just, let's approach this with a different mindset of we're not rushing. There's no strict deadlines. We're gonna take this slow because that's the way that's gonna work for us. I think another reason why fat loss doesn't work for a lot of people, definitely didn't for me for a long time, is not setting and sticking to our non-negotiables. This is something that we go through in SFL as well. So it's common during weight loss journeys to just totally sacrifice things that you love, like going out for drinks or eating chocolate, all for the sake of weight loss, even more subtle things like um, maintaining an accepting and kind mindset towards yourself or not becoming obsessed, not being obsessed about the number on the scale. Maybe another thing is the type of exercise you do. I know sometimes when people embark on a weight loss journey, they're suddenly like, okay, now we're going to do cardio this many times a week and this thing when before they didn't really do that or they didn't they don't like that thing they don't maybe you don't like running on the treadmill or maybe you really do whatever it is like you can you can design a weight loss plan that actually works for you and doesn't mean sacrificing things doesn't mean forcing yourself to do things because there are so many ways that you can tweak and change your your lifestyle your diet your movement your sleep your stress levels your mindset so that you can, you can get fat loss and it never has to mean doing these like 180s completely overhauling your lifestyle overnight for the sake of weight loss 
it's just almost always unsustainable long term. So as I said, in my online course, SFL, one of the actual very first lessons is writing down your non-negotiables list. What are you unwilling to sacrifice during your weight loss journey? What would just push you over the edge? What do you think is just unsustainable for you to be doing for, for the sake of weight loss? What do you want to keep, whether it's for increased adherence reasons, as in I want to keep eating, allowing myself to eat chocolate because I know that if I cut it out, I'm going to end up obsessing about it, freaking out and binging on it later. So like what will help you adhere to your plan? Or maybe you just want to keep something because you just really don't want to kick it out because you enjoy it and it just makes you happy in life. Of course, there might be things in that list that need slight tweaking. Like for example, if you eat like, I don't know, a huge two pints of ice cream every day, let's just say. You might be like, okay, I don't want to cut out ice cream, but we can, we can within reason make some tweaks here and there. So yeah, having that non-negotiables list is key. And a lot of us just, we don't even think about it. We just completely overhaul our lifestyle, follow some plan that someone else made that that person doesn't even know you. They don't know what you care about, what matters to you. They don't know your culture, the kind of food you like to eat. You know, it's about designing what works for you and you're the best person to do that. You know you best. You know what's gonna work for you and what's not. I'm gonna pause right there for a minute to share something with you. So if you've been listening so far and feel like you're ready to start your recovery journey with me, I've got the perfect springboard. That is my free masterclass, why you're still binge eating and how to stop. It's a 35 minute free video masterclass where I'll walk through all of the reasons you might still be binging. Then I'll give you three actionable steps to stop binge eating. So if you're looking for actual results in your life, want to never binge again, trust me, I know the feeling. I was stuck for 10 years doing that. Then head to the show notes to get instant access today. I'll also gift you something for joining me at the masterclass, but I'll leave that surprise for you to find out for yourself. Life is just so damn short and it's not worth feeling so miserable, unhappy, unhealthy with binging taking over. So watch the masterclass today to start your new life. Okay, let's get back into the show. Another thing I see people do is just not learning from past mistakes. Like how many times have you started yet another weight loss plan? Thinking that, I don't know, suddenly this rejuvenated self, these new levels of willpower and determination, this deadline is going to like motivate you to change and make something's going to be different this time. Yet you're still repeating the same approach, like the same strategy, the same diet plan, the same everything. I definitely did this literally for years. The same thing, just with a slight different flavor each time. Maybe. Uh, one plan was like, okay, I'm going to try to eat like a vegan diet for this long. Oh, this time I'm going to be doing smoothies. This time I'm going to be doing this much exercise. But for me, it was just always rooted in the mindset of I hate myself right now and I'm going to force change. I'm going to force it in an extreme manner. I'm going to do things that are unrealistic that I just know I've seen time and time again, just don't work for me. Like they fail by the fifth day. It's, it's already over. It's game over. Yet I was still doing the same thing every single time. These extreme plans and just not making room for the things that I enjoyed, not, not taking it slow. So that's something that I really focus on as well in SFL. It's like, okay, how can we look at our past mistakes? Why have things not worked well in the past? Where did we slip up? And what was working? Like, what can we keep this time, but get rid of as well. Another big slip up that's actually not talked about very much because, um, you know, everyone's focused on that first part of your journey and it's weight loss, right? But we often overlook the next part, which is maintenance. Everyone's focused on, yeah, let's get those results. Let's lose the weight. Woohoo. This feels great. But what's the point if you're just going to gain it back again, and then you're stuck in the same stupid cycle. (laughs) So one mistake I see people make is not increasing calories once they get to maintenance. As I said, it's one thing to lose weight, but it's another to maintain that new weight. It's the people, the part that people forget to focus on. And um, sometimes we just get so used to, I know this happened to me for sure. We get so used to being in that weight loss mindset, especially when you're doing it in an extreme manner, which we're not doing in SFL. So sometimes you're just like cutting calories so much, exercising so much, 
that if you finally get to that, you know, your goal or somewhere near your goal and you're ready to be in maintenance, it's so ingrained in you now to be like worrying about calories, thinking about food, cutting this out, cutting calories, that some people almost get scared to then increase their calories to a maintenance level. It suddenly seems like, oh my God, that's so much food. That's so much food and I'm so scared to regain the weight and lose all of this progress. <clears throat> but increasing your calories is an absolute must if you want this to work long term, if you don't have to do this again. Otherwise, what are you doing? You're just staying in a, some sort of a deficit state for a prolonged period of time, which is obviously not ideal and unnecessary. It's just going to mean you're, you're still going to be losing weight or you're going to start pushing your body too far and flip the other way and start binging because you just can't psychologically physiologically be in a deficit for so long and it not start to backfire at some point it's just too long so that can happen and so the takeaway there is you've got to increase your calories to maintenance level and that's unlikely to be the same amount of calories that you were on before you lost weight because if you've lost weight you're now in a smaller body and that smaller body requires less energy to to live on to exist when you're in a bigger body you your maintenance calories are higher than when you're when you're in a smaller body so your maintenance level will be lower than it was when you first started your weight loss journey that's all something we talk about in sfl and we find out what those numbers are for you another thing that can happen at maintenance is sometimes the route to weight loss was so extreme that by the time we get there we were just like oh my god finally I'm going to let everything loose. I can finally enjoy life again. I can finally eat all these things. And often, you know, there's more regain than desired. And I think also, if that's how you feel, if that's your mindset, you're definitely doing weight loss wrong because your fat loss strategy in practice should be so gentle, so invisible, hardly noticeable that by the time you get to that maintenance stage, you're just like, chill, okay, okay, cool, we're gonna increase calories or stop exercising so much or whatever it is. Whatever your strategy was, you can like relax it now. And you're not like having this huge sigh of relief. So do any of these stand out to you as mistakes that you've made in the past? If they do, definitely stuff to think about, stuff that you can start actioning. I wanna just continue by sharing five tips on how to lose weight while still maintaining the healthy relationship with food. And as I said, these are all based off of a recent one-to-one -one client who has successfully done a 30-day reboot and SFL, now she, we're sort of working together throughout her journey over the months to just, I think, keep her accountable, but also to have that second set of eyes. Going back basically to that awareness piece of just noticing when things might be like slipping or you're taking things too far it's always helpful to have that person there who gets it who's like hold on let's not do that like let's say yes to going to restaurants because that was one of your non-negotiables so let's keep doing it and living life there's no rush to this you know just having that person there can really help so one thing that we've been doing together is ensuring that her strategy is doable it's so doable that it's hardly noticeable. It's just like, okay, we're just making these tweaks here and there. It's easy. I always say that no one should be able to tell that you're trying to lose weight. It shouldn't be like, suddenly you're changing everything you eat and bring to lunch at work and all your colleagues are like, oh, are you on a diet? Like, why are you suddenly eating so different? And yes, we could do things, you know, faster. And like, science does show that low calorie diets do work and obviously you lose weight faster, but... They only work when you have medical supervision. Like it's really a serious situation. And as a person doing this on your own, it's so unlikely that you're going to actually be able to adhere to that plan. Like I'm sure you've even tried it in the past. It just, it's so hard. And as someone who may have also had a past with disordered eating or eating disorders, it's just not a route you want or even need to go down. So we can take it slow. We want fat loss that is also sustainable and does not take over your whole life. It's just unnecessary. So we're going to focus on, in SFL, focus on choosing strategies that feel completely doable, tiny tweaks that just are hardly noticeable to you. So that's what we're doing with this one-to-one -one client. A second thing is to take breaks. Most of us really approach fat loss like this. I'm going to cut this many calories per day every day until I reach my goal. 
But if we're approaching fat loss with a gentle mindset, it means that your journey is going to take months. It's not going to be fast. And we don't want to be in a deficit of some sort every day for months. Why? Because it's psychologically tiring to just have this thing to be thinking about for that long. Also, there are physiological effects to being in some sort of a deficit um, for too long. Uh, that Things like affecting your hunger hormones and more stuff. We talk about that in SFL. Um, so what I teach in SFL is the concept of diet breaks where you take week-long or even longer breaks, depending on how long your entire journey is estimated to be every few weeks so you'll be like okay let's let's apply our fat loss strategy for like three weeks and now let's just be in maintenance for a few weeks it's also really a great technique because it means that you get to practice being in maintenance every few weeks you don't get to that stage where you've been in this diet mentality for months or years and now you're scared to live in maintenance you're scared that it's going to make you gain weight so it's really good practice for that as well, just keeping you in a level-headed state. So we've been doing that with her as well. She's already done her first round and we're almost finished her second and it's working really great. Number three is that awareness piece. Be super aware of your previous issues or things that might be popping up, even that are different that you haven't experienced in the past, but you can tell are an issue. And that's where having one-to-one -one support is really helpful, just to have that second set of eyes. So awareness really is key. Um, Remember that list that I spoke about earlier where, you know, your food and body relationship can take a hit from losing weight. Those things are what we want to look out for. That is not going to happen this time because you're going to be keeping this increased awareness throughout. You're going to make a list of those things that happened in the past, those triggers, things that went wrong. And you're going to know, OK, if these things even start to slightly inch in, we're going to notice it and we're going to do something about it. We're going to catch them early on, if they even happen at all. And we're going to press the brakes when needed. We're going to make changes where needed. Because remember, you are in the driver's seat this time. It's not, it's not the weight loss. It's not the diet. It's not anyone else. You are in the driver's seat. So this is definitely something that we've been focusing on with my client. An example of this is she noticed that there were a few days here and there where she would kind of like be traveling and then not focus on eating and then she'd be hungry that night and instead of letting that just go on and on and then obviously spiral and become something so become an issue she brought it up the first time and we we're like okay what are we doing right now this is unnecessary we don't need to be fast tracking weight loss we're gonna stop that shit <laughs> and you're gonna prioritize eating regularly throughout the day because you notice that it affects your energy levels, it affects your focus. And yeah, we just don't need that. Another thing that we're really focusing on is not sacrificing those non-negotiables. So remember in SFL, we write out the non-negotiables list at the start of the journey. And all throughout, your job is to stick to that list, to not sacrifice what matters most to you just for the sake of weight loss. Weight loss is not the be all and end all. It's not the center of your life. It is something on the side that you're doing, that you're making small tweaks to bring about that change, but it's not, it's not everything. Life continues while you lose weight. You do not press pause. You respect yourself by still allowing the things that you need, the things you enjoy. As I said earlier, even if that means potentially dialing down on certain things or making smarter choices here and there, you're still not sacrificing those non-negotiables. And that's something that my client and I were focusing on in terms of for her, it's going out to restaurants. So she was noticing, again, this comes back to the awareness piece, she was noticing a part of her was like, mm, I might just say no to this one restaurant invitation because um, otherwise I, I can't really estimate the calories and I'd rather just make this thing at home that I know is making me lose weight and I know the calories in it. And I was like, hold up, <laughs> what are you doing? Your non-negotiables, you know, say that you still want to be living life. You still want to be going out to restaurants. You don't want to be getting into a mindset of fear, obsession, fixation, anxiety, stress around food. So we're going to stick to that non-negotiables list and you're going to be going out to restaurants. And she does. Okay, last one. Focus on other factors than just weight. I know, you know, it's too easy to get weight obsessed when losing weight. That it becomes the center of your life. To feel that high when you feel yourself 
losing weight, you can feel your body getting slimmer, yet that panic another day when the scale suddenly goes up, even though you tried so hard that day. We do not want to be on that roller coaster ride because it's not fun. So yes, I mean, it is nice, of course, to notice your results from your efforts. It's okay to celebrate weight loss if that's your goal. That's all fine. You don't have to like hide it or pretend that you don't care that you're losing weight, even though you're trying to lose weight. But we really want to be focusing on factors other than just your weight, just to ensure that you're staying level-headed and you're not placing all of your worth in your weight. There are other things, many other things that are so important to you, even other positive changes that might be happening due to the strategies that you're doing to lose weight, like maybe your energy levels or your skin is looking clearer, glowing. Maybe your resting heart rate is lower. Maybe your fitness levels are increasing or your digestion is getting better and more regular. Maybe even other things like your desire to socialize is increasing and maybe your confidence is soaring. Just all of these things to look out for and to be able to celebrate them as well. So we're not fixating on this one, this one goal, this one metric. Something actually with my one-to-one client that we focused on is you know, noticing that your higher self or your best self, whatever you want to call it, emerges not just when you lose weight. It's not just like you become your best self the moment you get to that goal. She shines whenever you want her to shine. When you do things like take care of your nutrition, your connection, your meditation, your movement, your stress levels, like whatever it is that your best self, your higher self embodies, I'm sure that it's It's not just, oh, I can be that self when I'm thin or when I've lost the weight, when I've lost five pounds. Not the case. So we want to really keep focusing on having a more holistic approach. Just allowing yourself to embody, to live as your higher self, your best self now, all along the journey, focusing on more elements than just weight because... It's actually something that we do at the very start of SFL is we sort of like envision, okay, what does our best self look like, feel like, how does she live, what are her habits, what's her mindset, all these things. And I know that that when you write down that, you know, what you envisioned, it is not one sentence. It's not my higher self weighs this much. It's it's a whole A4 piece of paper. It's three pieces of paper of writing down all these elements facets of yourself that you know are ready to shine and it's it's not waiting it's not there going to be unleashed the moment you lose weight it's already there it's already accessible so that's another focus that we're working on with my one-to-one client it's like okay what are other things that we can also be working on on the side that are going to help make you feel better to show you that you can feel better about yourself in ways that aren't always just revolving around your weight okay so just a quick summary It is possible to do it without fucking up your food relationship. Potentially again. It is possible to maintain your weight loss long term. And if you'd like more help on this journey, I definitely recommend checking out SFL. It's my science-backed fat loss course designed for women who want long-term results without destroying their food and body relationship along the way. And without just feeling miserable along the way as well. Like fat loss, this journey, it's, as I said, it's not the center of your life. It's just gonna be this peripheral thing. You get to still have fun. You get to enjoy life all throughout. Of course it's possible. So that's it for this episode. Hopefully it was helpful. It opened up your mind a little bit. Helps you feel less hopeless about, you know, fat loss always has to be miserable and it's not possible and it always ends up badly. Not the case at all. So that's it from me today. I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you next time. And that's the scoop for today. I hope you enjoyed the episode and learned something new that you can start applying to your life. It really helps my podcast to grow and reach more women who are struggling as well when you rate and review. So if you got a spare minute, I would appreciate it so much if you could rate and review. And if you took something from this episode, it would mean the world to me if you could share it with someone in your life. Change someone's day, mood, or even their life. Be that person. I know I absolutely love it when my sister sends me podcast episodes. It just shows me she's thinking of me and she wants to help me elevate alongside her. As always, feel free to DM me on Instagram at freewithbreed. I'm always open for feedback. And let me know what you want me to speak about on the podcast because after all, this podcast is for you. Okay, that's it from me. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you next time.